Ben here from Sonic Safari. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to bringing you all sorts of tutorials and news about all the latest gear and exciting things happening in the world of audio. I thought in this first tutorial I'd um, start with something fun. We're going to jump into Logic Pro and have a look at its inbuilt vocoder called the Evoc. Okay, so if you don't know what a vocoder is, it's a form of speech synthesis. This is not to be confused with auto-tune, um, which was first used by Cher in her um, hit Do You Believe in Love and subsequently been abused by every rapper and R&B artist since. Um, so a vocoder actually was originally invented by a chap at Bell Research Laboratories named Homer Dudley. And he was developing this since 1928. And basically, it was a way to get the human voice down a phone line and be much more data compressed so it could travel further. So this technology, you know, was refined, obviously. And later on, in the 60s and 70s, it was hijacked by other artists such as Kraftwerk and later on Daft Punk and many others. So here I am in Logic, and what I've got is I'm channeling my inner craft work. I've just recorded some vocals here of just me counting in English and Japanese. One, two, three, four, itch, ni, san, shi. Okay, so not particularly inspiring. Um, obviously, you can hear that there's no tune or anything there. Now, we're going to create a vocoder effect with this. The first thing to think about a vocoder is that it's not an effect per se. You don't apply it as an effect here like you would, say, a reverb or a delay. It's actually made up of two different signals. So one signal is called the modulator. That's the thing that gives shape to the finished signal, and that's usually a voice. The other signal is called the carrier, and that's usually some form of synthesizer. When you combine the two, you get that vocoded sound that sounds like a talking robot. So we're going to do just that. So first things first, I don't really want to hear these vocals. I just want to use them to shape the sound of the Evoc um, synthesizer. So what I'm going to do is come here to the stereo out and set this to no output so we're not going to hear it. Okay. So now I'm going to create a new track that is called, so we'll make a new software instrument and we're going to choose the Evoc 20 vocoder synth. Here it is. And at first, if I was to play it, it sounds nothing like a vocoder. It just sounds like a synthesizer. And in fact, you can use it just as a synthesizer. It's kind of maybe good for pads and lead sounds, something like that. But um, the idea is that we want to be able to, you know, um, make this into a talking synthesizer, a vocoder. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to set up what's called a sidechain. I might just rename this. So I'm going to call this vocoder. Okay, so up the top right here, I've got a sidechain input to the plugin. Now, many plugins have a sidechain input. You might be familiar with sidechain compression, where you use something like the kick drum to compress a bass or a pad and make it sort of pump in time to the music. But in this case, we're going to sidechain our vocals. All right. So basically, we're sending an invisible signal into the vocoder so it can listen to our vocals. All right. Um, even so, if I go to play this back, I'm not going to hear a vocoder. Okay, so I've written some MIDI notes here. Um, 
into the vocoder part so I don't have to play them by hand and at the moment it just sounds like this. Okay, and again, we're not really hearing this vocoder effect. So we've set a sidechain input here, but we also need to do something else here inside the vocoder. And that is we need to change the type of signal um, that we're, is coming into it. So at the moment, it's just using the inbuilt synthesizer. That's what we're hearing. But if we change this up here to vocoder or voc, now we should be hearing that vocoder effect where it's taking the vocals and it's shaping them um, to create this talking synth. Now it doesn't sound that great just yet, um, so we may need to change a few things. So first things first, I might just turn this volume up a little bit so we can hear it a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first of all switch this over to mono. So we're not hearing chords, we're just hearing one sound at a time. And this is actually quite a deep synthesizer in its own right. So by default, it's set to this FM mode. FM stands for frequency modulation. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out my course at Udemy called um, Synthesis 101 with RetroSynth. But I'm going to change this over to Dual, which is more subtractive synthesis. And the way that this works is that there's basically two dual, two different oscillators, hence the name dual, and this slider here is a mix between the two oscillators. I'll just set it all the way up the top, so we're just listening to wave number one, and it sounds a bit like this. Okay, getting better. Now, we can change the type of waveform here. At the moment, it's set to zero. It doesn't actually tell us what these waveforms are, but if we scroll through, we can listen to some different waves. Okay, I quite like number one there, it's got lots of bass. So that's sounding cool. Um, we can also maybe give this a little bit more definition. Notice that here I've got an attack and a release. So the attack is how fast the signal um, comes in. So I'm going to bring the attack all the way down so it's very short so the sound instantaneously plays as soon as you know a word is spoken. And I may even bring that release down a little bit too so it cuts off a little bit quicker. Let's have a listen now. Okay, sounding better. Uh, so what I might do is also one of the other main controls that we have here on a vocoder is the number of bands. The way it actually works is it analyzes the input modulator signal, which is our voice in this case, and it breaks it down into a number of different frequency bands, a bit like an EQ where you've got, you know, bass, low mids, high mids, treble, except in this case, we're talking a whole lot more bands. And it uses what's called an envelope follower, which basically is following the volume of those particular frequency bands. And then it's imposing those on our synthesizer. So what we get is like a whole bunch of EQs moving up and down um, to the volume of the voice, and that kind of shapes the sound of the synthesizer. So the more bands we have here, basically the more definition we're going to get. If we have a very low number of bands, like four, it's going to be very hard, actually five's the lowest, it's going to be very hard to hear what is being said. I'll turn the volume down a bit. So yeah, this sounds more like a really crude... 1970s vocoder where there really just wasn't much definition based on the technology at the time. But if we increase this, its default is 10. If I increase this all the way up to 20, which is as far as it goes, um, what we're going to hear is a lot more definition. One, two, three, four, eight, eight, seven, eight. Okay, cool. So we're now being able to actually hear. Um, what is, you know, what the, the words are saying a little bit better. Now, we could also add a little bit of noise to the signal, so it doesn't do so well with sounds like f, sh, those sorts of noisy sounds, so we could increase the level of the noise so it adds a bit more of that, so it's literally just adding noise to the signal. So you can hear it gives it that sort of kind of weird breathy kind of a sound, almost like, you know, um, 
the Batman movie, but I'm going to bring that down maybe about, I don't know, about here. Let's have a listen. All right, that sounds pretty good. Another way we could give a bit of de definition is this thing called UV detection. At the moment, this is switched to off. I can set this to noise. And I think what this does is it's basically just a high pass filter. It's basically just taking out all the bass. So we just hear just the very high frequencies of the original voice, the original modulator. And we can turn that up with this level here. Okay, so now we can hear a lot more of those high frequencies. All right, so some other things we could do to shape the sound. Um, up the top here, we've got this sort of frequency bar. This is a little bit like a filter, so we could take out the low frequencies and make it sound sort of uh, more tinny. One, two, three, four, each, 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 each. All right, or we could go the other way and take out the high frequencies. One, two, three, four, each, 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 each. So that's almost working like a low pass filter. And of course you could do a little bit of both and you could just have the mid range frequencies. This is a bit like a band pass filter. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna set that back and maybe just take out just a few low frequencies. All right, cool. There's some other controls underneath here um, to do with formants. Now formants are um, various frequencies within the human voice that determine things like the age or the gender of the voice. Um, typically, higher formants sound more female and lower formants sound more male. So it's not the pitch, but it's more to do with the tone or the timbre of the voice. So have a listen what happens if I shift the formants. As I turn it up, it's gonna kind of uh, sound a little bit more squeaky or a little bit more um, young or feminine, if you will. That's what people say. Let's have a listen. So um, at an extreme value, it sounds kind of strange and munchkin-y. Now we could bring it down. So now we can hear these really sort of low pitched formants. So of course you could automate all of this stuff for an interesting effect. You can also stretch the formants out. You can see these yellow lines represent the different frequency bands. So if I was to stretch that out, we're having a wider distribution of these bands. They're further apart. Let's play that back. All right, we could bring them in and you know, squash them close together. Okay, cool. So I'll set that back to where it was. So that's sounding pretty good. Um, now, of course, we could also play chords if we wanted to. Um, so if I wanted to play chords, I could switch this over to the poly mode. Poly means that we can play more voices. And we can also turn on unison. So unison is basically... Um, many voices. This is a control that you'll find in lots of different synthesizers where it blends lots of detune sounds together um, to make a richer, thicker tone, a bit like a chorus. Now I'm going to turn the volume down because this will make it a whole lot louder. Okay, and now we can actually play chords. Okay, so that's fun. Um, now, if you don't want to shape all these sounds yourself, there are actually a bunch of presets here. So if I come to the top, drop down menu and come to presets, notice that there's presets for synthesizer, which will just, you know, play this like a synthesizer. But if you've set up the side chaining um, up the top here, then there's also presets for vocoder. So there's vintage vocoders and more crazy warped vocoders. So here's a couple. Let's try out um, clear voice vocoder. One, two, three, four, each, me, sun, she. 
All right, let's try deep modulation. Okay, so plenty of uh, plenty of good presets there to play with, and of course you can tweak them away. I think I quite like this clear voice vocoder. Okay, so of course you don't actually have to use a voice as the modulator. You could, if you wanted to, use another signal. And what works really nicely is something rhythmic like drums. So I've actually got a drum kit here. So here I've got some drums, and if I unmute those drums, let's just have a listen. Okay, so there's some kind of simple little drums. Now, um, I don't really want to hear the drums, so what I can do is, just like we did before with the vocals, I can set that to no output, so we don't hear the drums. And coming back to my vocoder, we can set the sidechain to, instead of from our vocals, we can use the drums. So now we're sending drums through the vocoder. Let's have a listen. And we could even bring the drums back by setting the output back to the stereo output so we can hear the drums and the vocoder together. Okay, so I've just um, put the vocoder through a bit of reverb just to make it sound a bit nicer and let's have a listen. Okay, I could even duplicate this vocoder. And set this one to be listening to my vocals. Again, I'm going to just choose a preset here. Okay, so that's a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully you found this useful and um, now you know how to create your own vocoder patches. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and um, give it a thumbs up. And you can always check out more at my website, sonicsafari.co. Cheers, bye.